Another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game Business Spotlight where yes. we give you the news you can use. Yes. Today we got Chicago's own, my man Smitty. And listen, what Smitty gonna do, teach you how to build a legacy off of borrowed money. Damn, Fair. teach you how to build a legacy off of borrowed money. But what you need to do from the rip to get this free master class from Smitty, I'm talking about Rich Decisions University. What you need to do is text free. F-R-E-E to 909-473-4174. 909-473-4174. Again, that's 909-473-4174. Again, text free. He's going to give you a free master class and uh. to teach you how to build a legacy yes. off of borrowed money. Smitty, man, you come from Say. Chicago. The before, before we get started with Chicago, what, what you got to ask me about the chicken thing? I don't uh, know. What chicken better? Uncle Remus or Harold's? Uh, I don't like lie, her- nigga. I, I don't, like- don't lie, <laughs> nigga. No, let, me, let me say it. Let me say it. I like Harold's better. All right, cause, I like no, Harold's no, because no, listen, he's like from the Harold's West Side, better. so all the West Side I, I, niggas gonna say Uncle Remus yeah, just because Uncle Remus is a West Side chicken. Nah, I'm gonna go with Harold. Oh, he can't go back home. I'm gonna go. He's not gonna be able to go back home for that shit. They gonna go slap me all. They gonna slap me. That's something different. I put on for the city. We ain't. We ain't doing that. They know the whole thing. Rich decisions. You know, you got to make rich decisions. University. What I'm talking about. You you got to get people the game on how to build a legacy off of borrowed money. Like how is that going? And what what can you teach people? And what is going to be in that free master class? But tell them what, you know, building this legacy off first. Give mm-hmm. them that first. Got you. So I could just teach people what, kind of like my game plan and my journey and how I did it. So I could just, you can repeat the process. So I got my LLC. I had a good credit report. So if I leverage my LLC with my good credit report, I can get access to what we call it business credit card stacking, lines of credit stacking. If I can learn a sequence of what banks give me high limits with this specific credit score, the specific LLC, I can get access to 100000 250000 right? Then I take that money. You only you only use this credit money to be able to make money off of it. It's called good debt. We call it good mm-hmm. debt. We leveraging the debt to be able to make us money. This is people do to become rich, right? So uh, what I do is I take the LLC, that good credit report, and then I start a business where that's going to make me cash flow. So the first thing I started was a semi-truck company. You know, uh, that was my first idea thing I wanted to do to be able to make a lot of money, you know, as best as I can. I started that. I also took that. How old was you when you started? That was just two, three years ago. How I just you? I just started this whole business stuff. Two, How three old years was ago. you? 26. All right, go ahead. Keep going. Yep. Keep spinning. So then, um, then I started, I used the same method, the same leverage, you know, going to banks, being able to get lines of credit, business credit cards, uh, liquidating the money off those and being able to also obtain some Airbnbs in Miami. So I had went on a big deal. I did like 10 Airbnbs in my, we had 20 Airbnbs, but we went half and half with one of my partners. So I got 10 Airbnbs. He got 10 Airbnbs. Big project in Miami. Uh, I leveraged my credit to do so. No money out of my pocket type of thing. Like even if I had like $1,000, $2,000, I can get access to the money borrow it, you know, and then at zero percent interest, right? And then obtain something that's gonna make me cash flow. So now that the semi truck probably cash flow me eight thousand dollars a month, mm-hmm. you know? And I'm at home chilling. Uh my Airbnb's in Miami. We put it on autopilot. That probably cashed me anywhere from you know six thousand dollars a month, eight thousand dollars a month. So I'm just literally repeating the cycle of leveraging the money to be able to start me stuff that can make me cash flow. So now I want to be able to present a blueprint and a layout of how people can do it as well. So I'm Johnny Nobody, right? Mm-hmm. I you know I first of all I text free and then, you know, to 909-473-4174, I text free to get the free, you know, a uh, master class. What happened then? And I don't know nothing. Right. I'm sitting on the couch right now, a loser like he was, you know, in my mom crib, eating up all the food, playing the game, just a big loser, a grown adult loser. How right. do I get in the game using this? Right. So if I expose you to how you can start from scratch, mm-hmm. uh, the first problem that everybody run into is they got bad credit. So I'm, not, I'm just, it's 60% of the world got bad credit. So the first thing is to teach you how to clean it up or to put you in a position to get somebody to clean it for you. So that's the first step. So we need to teach you how to clean it or you need to get it clean. Uh, that has to happen. Then we got to learn how to build it. So we had to learn how to structure and build our personal side and the business side properly, how the banks want us to build it. So if I teach you how to build it, if I teach you how to clean it and I teach you how to build it, now I'm teaching you the funding side of it. Now this is how and which banks do we go to take our LLC and our good credit report. Which banks do we go to to be able to extend how much money we can get for ourselves to be able to go left? What's the it? best banks to give them? Give me you. What's the best uh, banks? Man, right the, the crazy part is Philly got the banks. Yeah. Philadelphia got the banks. They yeah. got the bag. What, what banks? Truist? Uh, Key Bank, Key Truist, Bank. Univis, uh, Y'all got y'all got some credit union. I think Pennsylvania, uh, no, Philadelphia, uh, federal credit. Yeah, yeah, federal I mean, credit yeah. union. Um, I, I like those. Like, so what we would do is some people would be like, well, I don't live in Philly. We got to play where we'll uh, set you up a foreign entity so that we can get funding in all fifty states. So now I can come to Philly. I got a foreign entity in Philly because of the, because of those banks give us the bag. I can set up a foreign. Entity and in all, Philly And it's all legit This too legit this, to quit This is legit 100 million percent Like MC Hammer 100 mm-hmm. uh, percent So if I get my foreign entity Come in Philly And go to See all four banks That giving out the bag I don't have to live here But I can set up A virtual address Right A virtual business address In here And I can set up A foreign entity And I can go get funded In Philly with all these banks 
and then I can go get business credit cards and lines of credit from each bank if my business has been open for two years and I two two year tax return. If you don't, which a lot of people don't got that, so we can still go in here and get business credit cards, leverage the good personal credit, the LLC. No matter how long it's been open, as long as you got you meet the requirements on the personal side, we can be able to go in here and still get at least at least minimum business credit cards. And it may be you know fifteen, twenty, twenty five thousand dollars limits per bank. So I may come out here and get a hundred on the lower end. Uh, if you're in my position where you got a business that's been open for two years, you got tax return, I might come out here and get 300, 400. I'm taking that and I'm going to learn an investment module or a business module that's going to be able to create me cash flow once again. you know. Or I'm putting it now, I'm a brand. Yeah, how you much know you got to pay off a month? Uh, so if I borrow 100,000, so, so, so let's say I gave you 100,000. Man, I think we're going to pay like $1,000 a month. Uh-huh. I, if I gave you if I gave you $100,000 and told you to pay me $1,000 a month, would you take it? I burn you, but see, I'm a <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Yeah, of course I'll give you a thousand dollars. Ninety nine percent of the world would say, "Man, yeah, I'll take it." No, just but, but, but how, much, how much is it usually about? Like a thousand dollars a month. If I borrowed, so, so, so I'll break it down like this. All right, say this. I, I said I get, that to you the other day. No, I'm gonna break it down shit. to him. I'm break it down to him. Like a thousand dollars a month, but I just wanted to ask him. Yeah, the, you know, if I got ten credit cards, right? They got ten thousand dollars limits. That's a hundred thousand dollars. If I take this whole ten thousand dollars and use it, so in my business or marketing to grow my business, right? I'm only gonna have to pay two hundred dollars a month back on this car. Around that, I'm not saying it's exact, but around that amount. And then if I got five cards, I mean, if I got ten. Whatever case, maybe that might be two thousand with ten. Or if we got five cards, it'd be a thousand. That's what I was going off of. Let me let, let me ask you a question now. Is it better that you pay it all back or pay more than what you like? Like, how do it go? Do do it matter? So I do. Or it you like pay this. the minimum while you investing and you cash flowing. I'm not in a rush to pay the money back because we got it at 0% interest for a certain amount of time. So the right. cards we go after, we got 0% interest for 12 months, 18 months. So if we got 0% interest for that that period of All time- All I do is get that you, flat 100000 back. back. So now they borrowing money for free. You give, you going to give me $100,000 for free? And I can use it to make me, flip it to make me more money. I give you back money. I don't got to pay extra money? Oh, come on. We can run this because this makes sense. And then, but after the interest kicked back in, you don't want to be borrowing that money out no more. You just investing in all that stuff because you got to pay the interest on it now. now I don't, so you got 12 months to get off. Yeah. You got 12 months to say, yeah. you know what? Make it happen, baby. I'm going to take this. I'm going to do this food truck. Or I'm going to go get me a truck. 100%. Two trucks. I'm going to give me a, a, a flatbed and get three to four flatbeds mm-hmm. and do this. Whatever you want to do, you got 12 months to get that shit off and pay it back. After that 12 months, that shit kick in on you. It's going to kick in on you. So you sh- you should be in the midst of trying to invest your money to at least make that yeah, money make back. make that shit right back. Putting it, putting it back on that credit card, paying it back off. So we leveraging the debt to create the cash flow to put in your pocket, but also pay this money back so that you can make money off the money, but also pay it back so that you can either use it again or- and once you pay you it know, back, you're going to get some more. What? We going to Even get a more. Whole, we going to get a whole rack of second round of funding. We call it we call it one round, round, two round, three round. We, um, we can get, credit is a to infinity. Like it, there is no cap to how much money I can be able to get access to over a long period of time. Over a long period of time, I get access to two, three million dollars in credit. I'm already at seven hundred fifty thousand. Mm, give him that number again. Listen, man, mm-hmm. I need y'all to do to get this free master class. I'm talking. About, he's talking about build legacy off of borrowed money. I'm talking about Rich Decisions University. Text free to 909-473-4174. 909-473-4174. Mm. nine zero nine four seven three forty one seventy four nine zero nine four seven three. 4174 text free right now. He's going to give you a free masterclass. Smitty is going to give you the game. I'm talking about, man, listen, how did you like, like, hold you, on, I got to give out a number, number two, because he was talking shit. Call 1 800, I cook the shit out of Smitty. <laughs> I'll barbecue bake this nigga. He been talking all that basketball shit. He showed him a slam dunk. 1 800, I cook Smitty ass. The only thing there. about that, Gilly, I'm not, I'm not them though, man. I'm a different I breed, but I, I my know. name to go for a reason. You said you a different breed, but you wasn't playing nobody in the video, right? You right. just was slamming. But I got videos where I played. You were slamming on the naked court. You were slamming on the butt naked court. The court right. was butt naked. Just the court was me. butt naked, dog. I, I you did do it. No, no. He dumped on a I butt naked no rim, bro. Yeah, that was wild. Can we say that? Like, Google you. Yeah, well, yeah school, all Google types of business shit. Come Lions up Town, we were second in state, too. Who? You second played Second in who? state. Jabari Parker then was in our state. We was, we second, was, second on me first. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck is he talking about? He was coming off the bench. And he was coming off the bench. Nigga averaged four off the bench. I was starting my season. Nigga was a bum nigga jump high. He averaged four off the bench. <laughs> all he wanted to do was get on a fast break so he could try to get a dump. Nah. That's all he wanted to do. Nah. I knew you tight, man. Tell about Googly. Nigga got bucket. two highlights. A put back dunk off a of miss and a couple fast breaks. Man, I ain't trying yeah, this shit. When foul, I Google bro. you, business yeah. shit come up. They say you, you one of the to... best business credit niggas that out there. I don't want to hear the rest that. of this shit. I'll take shit. that over who but, need that. All right, so now what is you going to teach him in this free master class? That they're going to get What so you going to teach want, him? And I don't know nothing. I'm just Johnny Nobody and I don't know nothing. I'm coming into the class. So what I'm going to learn? So we need to teach you how to clean it. Build it so clean the credit, build the credit, and then fund yourself 
But also, once you learn that module, then that sequence like that, we can be able to leverage that for to make you money as well. So we can do it for yourself. I want you to be able to clean your credit up, build it properly, how the banks want you to build it, get access to the money to do your own thing. But not only that, but let's learn this module to make you money now. So now somebody else don't got the expertise of how to go get 100K with their LLC. They just, they just got an LLC. You come in with the expertise of knowing how to get 100K with it. Okay, let's start you your own funding company. Let me teach you how to start your own funding company so now you can get other people's LLCs access to 100000 and take a percentage. So now you, I can teach you how to get an $8,000 payout, $10,000 payout for one client by getting them access to 100000 200000 that right. can and change then, your life. And then if a motherfucker don't know how to get the money and you're like, no, I can get it for you, then then they like, all right, because nine out of ten motherfuckers going to say, see what you can get me. In your mind, if you're a hell of a finesse, you already know what the fuck you can get them. So you're like, all right, let me put some work in. You hang up, you smoke some weed like me, if that's what you do. You might be a brewski warrior. You might be a brewski warrior. You know, you you might, you know, extra time to jerk off like low, you know. Then you call them back. All right, I did my investigation. I can get you 100000 What? Oh, my God. What I got to give you? All you got to do is give me 10000 Nigga, hurry up. Get it for me. Bring it to me. They're going to be happy as shit to give you that $10,000 because that's $90,000 of money that they did not have. Mm -hmm. That they probably would have never got. And this is this is the thing I'll say to people that some people would think like, man, it's the hard or I got to learn this and that. Man, being broke is hard too. You know what I mean? You building wealth or you getting access no, that's, to new that's information. Easy. Gil used to be that, broke. <laughs> eating his mom food up, playing on the, playing games on the couch, smoking bad yeah, weed. That's that, that stuff hard. So like you building yeah. your legacy or learning what you need to learn to get yourself in the next position, that might be a little tough. But you pick your heart. You know, that, that's why I like to present to people like pick your heart. You know, you want you better want to do this type of stuff. Gil used to smoke hard. The court cocaine. <laughs> He just smoked that hard. He loved that hard. So he picked his. He, he do because he think he could beat me at basketball. Yeah, so I understand where you're coming from. Oh, Matter of fact, this makes sense now. It's yeah. all. It's he all. He's put it in his blunt. It's all making cocaine. sense to me now. Mm-hmm. I, I get it. Yeah, I get was, it. You, it's, it's okay. I get that's it. all good. Yeah. He was wild, but see, this now. Now I go in there, and how long do I stay in this mat? Is this class, and is it a follow up? Like, what do I get? Yeah, so uh, we do like a 45 minute session. Just I just need 45 minutes of your time, probably an hour. You know, uh, we stay on there and I give you the game. I'm so, just you, getting, so you bad like that? You need an hour, I'm going to understand all this shit. I'm, I'm going to break it down to you where it's very clear for you to understand mm. and you can take actionable steps off the free stuff. Here you go, do your thing. So mm. one, of my, one of my big calls is this, right? Why, why, why Smitty teach people stuff? Why you want to teach? I want to be able to build a community big enough that I can come together. If I teach you how to get 100K, you how to get 100K. And I got a community of a thousand people. They all know how to get access to money, right? And when I bring y'all all back together and we do a big project. Oh, everybody put in 20,000. Let's do a group economic. We can buy a skyscraper. If I teach everybody in my community, I got probably a thousand people in my community. If everybody go get 100K, $200,000, I tell people, all right, I'm, I'll set it up to fund this big investment for all of us to be able to do something bigger than we ever probably can imagine. Because if we put together a million, two million, we go get something that's worth 10 million. You know, twenty million, and then now we cash flow off of that, and we divvy up the percentages. However, we got to divvy up. That's one of my goals that I want to set up for my community. That people that's coming in, tapping in with me, and how I want to set things up. If I teach everybody to go, you know, fishing, get the money, we can come back together and we can put something bigger together. Mm, that's major, man. Now, what y'all need to do right now? Y'all need to text free. I'm talking about Rich Decisions University, but text free the nine zero nine four seven three forty one seventy four nine zero nine. 473-4174. He's going to give you a free master class to teach you how to build legacy off of borrowed money. One more question. How did you how did you how did you beat the streets of Chicago and go this route? Um I never was I never was super in the streets like that. But uh I seen I seen some bad stuff happen quick. You know what I mean? So one of the one of my other terrible stories that made me just snap out of all that not doing that wild stuff was when my friends got killed. I was living with one of my guys. Uh we was real tight and then we went outside, we having fun and stuff like that. We uh come out of the club. He get shot. He he get mm-hmm. killed. My roommate. That threw me. That threw me all off. I'm like, nah. This this ain't this ain't the, the type of path I'm trying to go down. You know. Uh, I got I got family members that was already went down that route too. I knew I I got learned what not to do. Like I seen what was going on with that route. I ain't want that. You know what I mean. But I also was I was just in the midst of doing all the crazy stuff a little bit at first because I got you know that's all I knew too. And I was just seeing it. I'm around. It's my environment. I snapped out of that stuff. Like, there was one day when he got killed, bro, I, I got to thinking, bro. I'm like, I don't want to die type of stuff. And I, I just started seeing too many people around that I knew dropping. Like, man, that stuff, I got to get out of my environment. So uh, the first thing I thought was, if I move away from this stuff, I don't have to be in it, you know, to consume it. Because it's like, bro, if you if you put a baby 
in a room with people clapping, the baby started clapping. And it's like natural. It ain't even a thing that mm -hmm. I kind of got drug into it a little bit more so than me wanting to do it type of thing. So I had to snap out of it, really. Uh, I think that woke me up, though. Uh, my best fr my best friend getting killed, I think that woke me up. And now you're on the next level, man. Once again, text that number, man. Text free. The 909-473-4174, yes. man. And check him out, Smitty underscore, Smitty the Goat underscore on uh, uh, Instagram. Listen, man, he's going to give you a free master class, man. Teach you how to build legacy off of borrowed money, man. Anything you want to say before we go, Smitty? Uh, yeah. Uh, also, I wanted to shout you out and appreciate you for, uh, man, the episode you did that really that really touched me, too, with the Chicago one you did. Oh, yeah, yeah. We was in uh, there. I, I felt what you felt when you was telling them what you was telling them because now that's how I feel that I, I seen the other side of this shit because, yeah. like, uh, I know that they don't know. Like they, yeah. they only see in, in, a, in a part of what they're a part of, but they don't know the other side of this. And the other side of this is big, bro. It's, it's big. green the other on side the other side. The other side they of outside that, of your neighborhood. Oh my God, it's crazy. Outside of your neighborhood is vast. I'm talking about it's the world waiting for you. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of opportunities, man. And, and that made, that made, that really pushed me like, damn, you know what I mean? I really got to push my measures harder because I feel the same way that you felt on that video. It's the same way I feel that, that when I could teach people like this type of stuff so that they can't got to do what they've been doing. And that stuff like, that's not even comparable to this stuff. Yeah. You, you don't be making millions for real doing that stuff. This business world, this this is where you make the millions. That that yes. little petty stuff that they be doing, they think they make it money. That stuff, not nothing. But uh, you know that that just I just wanted to say shout out to you for that. Well, oh, listen, man, man. Shout out to um, you know Smitty. Shout out to Rich Decisions University once again. Text free the nine zero nine four seven three forty one seventy four and get the free master class. Oh. This was another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game. Been the spotlight, man, and it's just it's like that. that right. If you go. Um, if you could change anything about the NBA, what would you change? Coming from a player perspective. Coming from a player's perspective, I wish it was more like a, um, I wish it, I wish they had more for people who didn't, uh, I would say like not so much paying out, but, like, people who just don't got their shit together. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's no rule book to this shit. And, and for me, they, they're getting better with it now. But, like, when I was coming out, and, and which made it which made it so hard because they always do a knock on dudes who's coming out of high school. And, like, there was no preparation for this shit. You right. know what I'm saying? They didn't prepare you for... And, and nobody could have prepared us for social media and what we got going now. Right. But, like, at the same time, there's... The lack of preparation going into it, and and what the expectations and how to budget your, your time and all of that, they 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 could have done a lot better with showing you how to be a, a, an, an adult in a sense. You know what I'm saying, like, don't get me wrong, like we all got our time, and, and we as men, we don't like to be told what to do, but. For some of us who come into a, a, a shit ton of money really early in age and we only got a certain span to really make this money and really get to that bag, unless you're really fortunate to make it, like there's no there's no guidance to it. There's no guidance with it financially. Like I was walking in the tellers at 19, 20 years old really never really having a conversation and understanding what was going on, just asking these people for twenty, thirty thousand. Knowing I had it, but like not really understanding the transaction of it. What I'm doing with it, what's going on with it, I'm gambling with it, I'm not gambling like how You just needed it on you. I just not even no, I didn't even need it on me because I've never really been a cash dude, but I'm playing cards. I'm playing cards with Chuck, Mello, Kmart. Can be we got thirty forty thousand on the table. You lose thirty forty thousand by the next trip. You got to pay thirty forty thousand. Right. What's the so, most you ever lost? The most I ever lost in a game was probably like twenty thousand, twenty five thousand. What's the most you ever seen somebody lose? Like two hundred. Bam. Word. Playing cards. Oh, playing that cards. Was, that was a plane ride from. That was a plane ride. LA. No bullshit. That was a plane ride. I seen somebody lose then a million dollars in, in, in the casino. Mm. And but but when I tell you, took it like a chant, like wasn't worried about it, no nothing. Like bro, I'm not that type. Bro, I win five hundred at the slots. I'm gone. Right. Like I ain't, ain't got to worry about me. I'm never gonna win that much. Right. But you lose a damn near an M, and you not even sweating. 
Oh, he's a big like, boy. Like, you just, I'm like, boy, you different. Yeah, you different, you different. different. God damn. You different. I wouldn't have slept right for two years. Shit. Damn. Different. God damn. An M in one night. And, like, it was a breeze, though. Like, just. <sighs> I'm sitting there like, bro, that's. It's 300000 just like. I'm like, damn. Mm. That's when I knew it was just like. This shit ain't for me. <laughs> this shit just not for me. Because if I ever get to that point where I'm doing shit like that with, with money like that and I know where I come from, like, I can't. It's just not happen. Yeah. It's just not happen. Right. That's cars and you know, everything. Like, I look at this shit like, if if I'm going to be selfish with it, I'm gonna, I look at so much other shit that I could buy for me oh, and do for me. Then, with 300000 and 800000 And you throw these shits away in hands like... That's crazy. Million dollars in a night. Now, now, NBA. Uh, I think these young cats today is just energetic. They ain't playing no games. If you had to pick five from right now, not Clute, no, no, no KD, no LeBron, none of them. Kyle Reeves, you can't include none of them. I'm talking about the young guys. Mm. Who are your five? Young guys, Ja, mm-hmm. Luca. Mm-hmm. This is no order, right? This is just no picking order. five. Ja, Luca. Uh, ooh, Anthony Simmons. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Portland. Gotta go, J. Pool. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go with y'all boy, Maxi. Okay. Yeah. That's right. I like Maxi. Maxi's a beast. I work out with him a lot in LA. That's my young boy. He, he's a fucking beast. He's a problem. He's a No fuck. fear, no nothing. But he a wholesome dude though. Like he ain't trying to be nobody he not. He's oh. just a dude that wanna hoop and that's all he about. Yeah. I respect I every respect time you see him, all he do is smile. That's it. You know what I mean? He ain't got he ain't gonna have no bad days. I'm looking at this dude every morning, seven AM. I'm over here, his bitch grunting, I'm old, getting out the car, he over there. Yo, what's good? We ready? We ready? Like, damn. He I do your too, young mother uh, at seven AM. Shout out to Straight his up. uncle, you nut ass nigga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now uh, I hope we beat this shit out of Dallas, you <laughs> nut ass nigga. Now when you came in the you came in the league, right? You didn't have no uh there wasn't no people to give y'all no game or information that played the game before y'all and understand about the women, the drugs, the groupie men. Man, um, people don't talk about be, that be, enough. Because, because what happened is you go to these cities, you're an athlete, you're that guy. Next thing you know, you're in the clubs, you understand, because everybody's going to cater to you in the city, the strip clubs, uh, the food spots, the regular clubs. And then it'd be a movement of people. It'd be this movement of women uh, that's for everybody that might just look good. You understand. You fresh. You wet behind the ears. Mm-hmm. And then you got a movement of men who might got money just want to be coached, which now they want to rise. So now you don't know no better. You in a, whatever city you in, especially if you ain't in one of them quiet towns like a like a Denver, like a uh, Salt Lake City, like a Portland. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you ain't in one of them cities, Seattle, you, if, if, if you up in Milwaukee, you up in L.A., you in New York? You in Miami? Action. Philly. All these, t- it, it's going down. Yeah, the chicks, sure. The chicks is on you. Somebody trying to get pregnant ASAP. Immediately. Somebody trying to be a baby mom. What What do you think the lead needs to establish so these cats can be on point when they coming in? Because that money hits your account and it's like, all right, it's like, when that money hits your account and you come from where we come from, it's a lot of problems. Because it's not like Sometimes the other side, the white cats, when they come to the league, they people already be set up, got mm-hmm. the crib, got the house. You know what I mean? Anybody, dad, the truck, they happy. He only really need. Yeah. But us, we got to come in and everybody looking for us. You got to buy your mom a crib. You got to buy, 
your, your, your brother crib, uh, the two homeboys, they don't even tell you nothing, but they hold things. Yeah, man, this boy, he going to the league. I'm ready to give me a chain, a rolly. I'm ready to give me a wraith. They be, they be counting the money. Every, like, you got so much pressure. When they check in, you, you, you putting your hat on, everybody adding the money up. Damn, he going to be, what's his name? All right, he going to uh, L.A. I know I'm moving out there, Woody. You got five homies out here with you. You got a whole apartment joint that's with them. You keep getting complaints from the, the, the supervisors because they smoking weed, running bras out of there all Dude. night. You you at practice. You don't know what's going on. But you got the bill and they keep calling you. Yes, sir. What is, like, like is there anything set up or should be set up in the league so people could get these guys the game yeah. about how to... I think, I mean, it, it isn't, but I think it should. Like, and honestly, I think it comes in tears. And, and, and this our responsibility is as the, as the former players. And I don't even think it's on the league. Like, I really think it's us on us as the players. Like, and it's certain, when I say tears, like, because everybody is, everybody ain't the same. Everybody ain't come through this thing the same. So, yeah. so you got, you got your lottery picks. You got the dudes who, you, like, you, you know is going to be, I mean, pretty much the dudes who are going to stick for the next couple of years or whatever. But you got to, even within those lottery picks, you got at least four or five dudes who you know is got, like that really got an opportunity to be that dude. So if you got a guy like uh, a Zion or a, 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 let's say KD just for circumstances, but like a, a, a type of tier dude like that coming through the league where you know he about to make waves, you got to sit him down and put him with other dudes who've been in that situation, who've been one or two picks, three, four or five picks, who understand the circumstances of which Pressure. Which, the pressure you about to endure, the money you about to endure, the females that's about Level to come into it, all of that. And, and it goes down from, you know, those top five to top eight, ten dudes to the, to the ten to twenty dudes. And then the dudes who, like, scrapping to still to stick around. Because believe it or not, the dudes who be scrapping to stick around is the ones who really live in check to check, blowing their shit because they trying to keep up with the Joneses. Because at this point, you barely baking bread, but you still playing on a team with... Ron, Kyrie, Kev, other dudes who out here driving the roses and the fans they and they up, switching they up, up the different game. days switching and up. Yep, different whatever, color. whatever. And you know what I'm saying? You you may not you, – you, he making $40 million. Uh-huh. But because you play on his team, you think if we make it forty million. No, 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 no. He make it forty million. Right. You make it eight hundred thousand. Right. And you it's easy for dudes to, I've seen them get caught up in that and all that. Fortunately – I, I've never been in a situation to where I've lived outside my means to that extent, but like, I, it happens all the time. Right. Like that, that shit is it's a real thing. And then like you, before you you were saying like people don't realize like the groupie dudes is the worst. They vicious. They vicious because they always it's it's always do like oh no I got the I got the weed I got the bitches I got this I got that we got this they just want to be around they want to be around and before you know it they quote unquote pulling tagging motherfuckers along but before you realize you got a thirty thousand dollar tab that he looking at you to pay like yeah you having a good time but this got to get taken care of right. they going. Where we going after this? The, the liquor, ride, the, the liquor, food. the crib we got to go to, the hotels, like all of that shit adding up and that shit on you. You sitting there looking like, bro, I ain't even asked for all this. I, I could have went to, I could have went to sleep by myself right. for all this. Right. Like, it ain't, ain't even ain't, like that. I ain't asked for none of this shit. Nah. Real talk. And what well, they need to let the players know, they need to let me come there and break it down to all the rookies as soon as they get there. Let me just tell y'all something, right? All the rookies there is a union of bitches all around the country. See, you don't know that these bitches is everywhere like broken glass because this your first time in the city. Yeah. You hear me? These is going to be some of the baddest bitches you ever going to see in your motherfucking life. Mm. Bitch feet look like she never walked on them, like she laid in a baby, baby crib, crib till she was 23. You hear me? No, but you hoped and prayed for her. Right. She gonna come. She but gonna you play don't understand. Right there. You don't understand. You met this bitch. I was playing at Denver Nuggets. And, and being you, your man DMs on the same team. And you know what mm. you and, and you know what and you know what you ask? You ask what's the popping spot tonight. Mm. And guess what they tell you? They told you where all the basketball teams go to cookies. Come. Yeah, and no, all this the upscale when y'all want to mm. go here. And guess what she know? 
that y'all had a game tonight and all the motherfucking a girl players from there. come to the motherfucking cookies. And guess where she gonna be at? Her and her girlfriend, they some bad bitches. They gonna plant themselves right, right in cookies. Right? They, they gonna, gonna be looking and like guess cookies. guess what you gonna do? You gonna see this bitch and you gonna be, you gonna look this bitch in the eyes and you gonna say shit like, man, I buy this bitch a Benz. <laughs> I buy a Benz. This bitch so bad, god damn. I drink this bitch bad for them. Uh-huh. Then you gonna, then you gonna, gonna drink the bath water, it's gonna be over. And then guess what? You in the club with a bunch of six, seven, six, eight, six, nine lanky motherfuckers, and they guess what she know? These niggas play for the other team. So guess what she do? She lock eyes with you niggas. And well, that's all you was waiting for, cause you was trying to get a look from that motherfucker. Now you lock eyes, y'all exchange numbers. You don't know she gonna be in that same motherfucking club when the Detroit Pistons come through, mm-hmm. and she gonna be in that same motherfucking club when the Sixers come through. She got to play on eighteen and the Warriors. You hear me? And mm. motherfucking Knicks. And every night she in there. Every other night she in there going home. She glazing a dick, and then she only looking to catch one of you niggas. Sure. That's all she looking to catch. But it's she juggling like of fifteen you, of y'all. Yeah. She's just looking to catch one of you niggas. That's all. She get one of you niggas, she good forever. Oh, I'm pregnant. Ah, I need child support, 8900 a fucking month. Nah, but it's crazy because a lot of times, like, we, we think it'd be like that, but it, it's just like that with a, a lot of them in general. It ain't even like a female need money or nothing like that. It's a lot of females who just want to, like... Yeah. Be with it, stand next to somebody uh, who Africa. quote right. unquote right. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. right. It don't even be necessarily they want to set you up for the child, but a lot of times when you meet your bitch like that, and then y'all stand by each other, it don't never really be no trust there. So then she end up not being your bitch. That's what I'm saying. She be everybody else. Bitch. And then when she's not your bitch, she like, uh, but we got two kids together. So child support sixteen thousand four hundred a month. <laughs> Shit, that's for one. Oh, no, damn, thirty-two thousand eight hundred a month. You like, uh, damn, man, I shouldn't have stopped in Chicago. Right, I should have went to my room that I night. I should have nah, never worked the fucking cookies right. in Minnesota. I should have. I should have went. Listen, I played the game. I had my food waiting for me. I should have. You know, you, you coming out. You know, you come out the locker room. You got you took your shower. You got mm-hmm. your bag. You going to the joint. You got the top flight hotel. You don't need nothing. You're like, damn, I should have went oh, there. Oh, that's when you start blaming your team. He said, I wasn't even going to fuck Yo, out. Yeah, I was about to say. I was about to say. He took me to the club, man. <laughs> Come on, nigga, you that's bitching. That's when my accountability <laughs> left me. Like, I'd be like, yo, bro, fucking with you, bro. If I wasn't fucking with you, I wouldn't be in this predicament right now, boy. I was chilling. Like, for real. <laughs> real like, talk. I, you, be, I ain't going to hold you. That's, I'm, I'll be on that shit for, like, every all Every nigga the, be man, on that what? shit. what? All a nigga do, nigga meet a bitch, now he going through it, he Boy. blame it right on his homie, dog. You was the one that wanted Bruh. to go the fuck the Onyx that night. Man. I didn't even want to fuck it. I ain't even want to go. <laughs> you you like, always want to go to the city. This nigga right here, he always want to go to the city, man. He like, he, nigga be sitting there like, dog, uh, uh, yeah, I wanted to go to Onyx, but I didn't tell you to drink a bottle of Hennessy, take your shirt off, do hey, 4,000 and ones, and then fuck the bitch raw. You did <laughs> <laughs> the whole time, the hey, whole time. I was with you till you said wrong. No, listen. But listen, the whole time, the whole time. I was with you till you went there. And all you had to do, listen. All you had to do, because you had the plan. You had your food waiting for you, because they, your people was when they got the food, because you know the city is so that platter that you like from that they, spot. They, got exactly they brought it down you to like. you. They made sure you got a top flight joint. You got the whole pan. You in the best hotel in the city. Room overlooking the city. You could just go back and chill. Plug up your Beats by Dre speaker, one of your speakers. You know the vibe. I'm going to chill. I'm going to relax because we got to jump on the road early in the morning. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. You had cookies. You would cookie. And shit got real crazy because she brought her girlfriend too. And let me ask you a question. You ever snuck out to get some ass from the hotel or snuck some ass into the hotel? In, uh, nah, because our shit different. Like, our shit ain't like the NFL shit. Like, them motherfuckers got curfew and all that shit. I shit, like, bro, as long as you be there for the meeting and there for the bus, you good. Oh, in the morning? Yeah. Oh, so y'all oh, niggas man. was... They, they nah, got, yeah. He out Chicago at a bitch crib on the west side at 3 in the morning. Bro, no Man's bullshit. Was I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Real talk. We play... Oh, dumb as shit. Real talk. We play... I, I, got, I got six men of the year, right? Yeah. <laughs> This is this this is during that year, but I was already like I was on fire. I was killing, and 
Man, fuck with my brother. I had a night in New York, and it was a, a, a memorable the greenhouse night back in the greenhouse days. Shout out to Spade. But when I tell you, I left there. We left there one night, went somewhere down a block, and I didn't get. I didn't get to practice until like nine o'clock. We had practice at eleven. And I got I got there at nine and I slept the last two hours at the arena. I never went home. And when I tell you that shit was in fucking incredible. When I tell you I had a time, I had a time. Yeah. But how'd you play that day? Went nuts. Oh, you mm. went crazy, huh? Crazy. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Unfortunately, that was one of my spills. If I had a, if I went out, I played well. Well, I'd have been, I'd have lived in the club. Shut the fuck up, nigga. I'm gonna have thirty I could, tomorrow. I'll oh, be trying. I was trying that at one point. Then it got hit to me, so I had to, I, I had to dull it down. I'd have told the coach, "Fuck you, talking about nigga." When I when I go home and I get eight hours of sleep, I had fourteen. No, no, when I bullshit. drink any and I and I dog these bitches out and I show up to the arena at eight and get three hours of sleep, I average thirty four point seven. I'm getting drunk tonight. <laughs> That's crazy. You ever missed the bus? What? What happened when you missed the bus? They leave you? Not only did they leave, bro, first So of you all, gotta get on the plane to go catch them. No, no, I no, I did miss the plane. First of all, I missed the plane one time, but they didn't know I missed the plane, so I got over one. How the fuck they ain't know? How you okay, break this story down? So I'm in uh I'm in Atlanta. Oh my god, you was in Magic City all night. Mm-hmm. Nah, it was uh Which was one? Gold then? Room? Nah, it was like Molly's or some shit like that back then. So Oh my God. So I'm in the strip club. I ain't gonna throw them under the bus. So I had to go to North Carolina one the next day, right? So the flight the the team plane or the team bus left at nine. But he was leaving at uh like nine thirty. So I missed all that shit. I ain't wake up to like twelve thirty one. But was going he was going to North Carolina and the team was going somewhere else. And it just so happened that we had a conversation the night before, right right after the game, that I was gonna be flying back with him. So I was good with the team. But once once I realized like as the night was going on, I'm like, nah, fuck that. I'm gonna just go back to the crib, like catch the flight. So I hit the trainer or whatever. And luckily, the trainer bailed me out. So I missed the team plane to go back to the crib. And I left. I missed his plane to go to North Carolina and fucking around in Atlanta. It was like. How did you get there? I, we drove. I drove from Atlanta to North Carolina. Because mm. I couldn't. I, couldn't, I wasn't going to fly back to the, our city and just be coming to the regular airport. Because the NBA teams, they know too much. It ain't just like. You know what I'm saying? Like they. They know everybody in whatever in your city. You see somebody just walking through the gate, whatever. It just be the most random shit, and they be like, "Oh, what was you doing walking through it?" At they 10? Got I thought you was flying they got people back. Hey, we were watching. Oh, for sure. They this is literally federal with them, one hundred percent. Damn. So you drove back. We dro- I drove from every Atlanta. Fucking law on eighty five. Drove from Atlanta to North Carolina. Caught the jet from Carolina back to, to the, uh, Oklahoma. Mm. Mm. Lucked up, man. This is crazy, man. Mm. You had some crazy nights, man. No, I had some nights. I ain't gonna lie. You I lived the life, but I'm I'm fortunately to be on the good side of it. Too. I seen a lot of motherfuckers on that side, and I ain't and seen come them back. since. Damn, For real. the women and drugs and the yeah, party, straight up. Damn. Like I, for, fortunately for me, like I never like. Dibbled and dabbled and, and all that chemistry shit. So I kept it weed, not a little bit of liquor. And people always look at me like I'm some henny guy and all that shit. And I don't even really drink like that. Like, I ain't gonna hold you. I swear. No, that was like, the meme, man. No, nah, it was the meme. And it, it, what made it so bad was like, <laughs> it was a bottle of champagne that they put the meme in. So it was like, I, if you drink henny, you know what a henny bottle look yeah. like. If you drink champagne, you like, if you drink, yeah. you know what bottle right. look like. So, but it was just the name that they gave me. So. Hey man, players. But now listen, if you um, if you had to get some game, as young boys, a lot of young cats in the NBA, NFL, a lot of them, just young cats in sports, they watch this show. If you had to get them some game, what would you tell them to protect themselves? Because now it was cool then, but now it's fifty times nastier than when it was out here. 
Yeah. Like the clout, I'm talking about the clout, the I'm talking about the semen demons. They yeah. is the fuck the cameras. out here. For, for one, the DMs, I, the IG, all this shit. I think the the number one the number one thing I would tell them is to under, understand and under and develop a true relationship with yourself, and understand like you don't need the the applause of everybody else to be a hundred. Like you don't need that. You don't need nobody else's validation to feel like you're a hundred. You don't need nobody else's validation to feel like. That's what makes you happy, sad, or whatever else. Do move how you want to move on your on your time. Like, don't get me wrong. Don't disrespect nobody else's time. Be late and do stupid shit. It's fines and shit like that. Like I did, but at the same time, like you got to establish that precedent with yourself first, because it's easy to get lost and, and caught up in some bullshit. And I've seen it. Like if you don't if you don't have a true grasp and hold on who the fuck you is doing this shit, right. like it's easy. It's real easy, and there's snakes out there, and they'll let you like they'll let you drown, die, yeah. drink your blood, everything. Right, and it's straight like that. Ain't hey, no chasing. Like they ain't. There's people out here who really don't mean no good, positive intent for nobody. Right, but themselves. Right, and for us athletes, we tend to be so gullible and yeah, you got yeah, the money yeah, you got the money this. you got the this money. you got that and, and and it's easy to get motherfuckers leeches up under if you if your circle ain't tight if you not whole as a person you don't need nobody who's sitting there trying to blow smoke up your ass or do something for you get your, nah they don't need you to take the trash out I'll go take the shit out myself right. like, I'm like male groupie shit like oh oh let me go I'll go get this girl for you nah bro I'll go get this bitch myself like I don't right. need you to talk to me for nothing like right. I don't need no spokesperson you see right. what I got right here she right. know what I do right. this is right. I, ain't none of that right. so when, when people like that's the first thing I tell them is, and the second thing I tell them for real for real is understand every brother ain't a brother every sister ain't a sister like everybody don't want the best for you even though they, they may have the same last name as you they may look like you they may whatever whatever and a lot of people don't understand that it's like because for me I preach a lot of black love and black unity because that's what I want to see, and that's what I want to unite with. But I also want to unite and, and preach on a, a, a lot of the sa- either the same level or higher thinkers. Because the moment I continuously try to keep pulling you up, pulling you up, and you keep pulling me back, like bro, I'm not, I'm not about to sit and keep reaching my hand down. Like I'm either gonna go to the next level without you, or you gonna come on. Right. But I'm going up. I'm not, I'm not about to sit yeah. here and just keep doing this with you bro I can I don't got that kind of time we not I'm not fortunate enough I'm 37 years old if I'm blessed as a black man I got another 25 30 years out here right. so I ain't and I got four miles of feet of my own so I ain't got time to be helping a whole nother grown ass man trying to get out the mud like right. we all with, let's go right. you know what I'm saying so right. I think for me for the young to kick the truth to the young black youth like bro it's too much it's too much competition. We, there's not enough unity. And that's the only thing I hate about basketball, football. They really don't apply to us as much anymore in baseball. But like those team sports, are opposed to like a golf or a tennis or something like that, because then you really get to understand what your what your team look like. Because we we as basketball players, we've been built on a team. We put in this certain mentality oh it's all about the team it's all about the team it's all about the team when in actuality you have an individual team as you have a team as individuals that is more important like for me i got four kids i got they they two mothers like my parents I got siblings. They got they got their kids. But at the end of the day, they grown ass people. Y'all got your own situation. These these are seven people I'm reliable for. Right. I'm responsible for. Right. If if worse come to worst, I gotta make sure they good. Right. Even before me. Right. To to an extent, because they the the mothers obviously take care of my kids. Right. So that's just a given. My mother, hundred percent. That's that's what I do it for. Other than that, bro, you got to get it how you live. Right. I'm not about to be sitting out here at 38 years old going to the strip club spending $10,000 with my homies. Like, hey, bro, who's spending that? Right. We're going to go to the bar, get a drink. Right. And you're going to, we, we might go Dutch on that. 
Right. <laughs> this ain't done. Right. Like, I ain't nah. I ain't nah. Right. I'm all about get. Listen, we on the upside. We trying to make bread together. All right, cool. But all that other just key, key, key to be around. That's dead. Right. Mm-mm. Right. And that shit. I've been told you that. Yeah. Huh. I don't hang with niggas just to be hanging with niggas. Fuck nah, me hanging out for I did that already, man. I did that for enough time in my motherfucking life, man. Man, it's time to get yeah, to it, bro. It's time to get Super to get it, to man. It. We got we to gotta get to it. We got to make something. If we not bringing value to each other, what the fuck we doing, man? What is we doing? fuck we doing, man? We ain't... It, it, we just gonna keep, keep always keep getting around. Yeah, man, you seen the game last night. Yeah, man, man fuck that shit, man. Let's talk about some money, man. You Word. hit the bank this morning, nigga. Did you see your account last night when twelve o'clock came and that money hit, nigga? Man. See, that's the type of shit I'm trying to talk about. All the rest of that old shit. Yo, son just had twelve tackles. Yeah, I'm trying to tackle twelve motherfucking checks today, nigga. Sure. What the fuck is you well, talking impress about? me. You sent so, me the video that you just got the new beds or the new Maybach or something <laughs> shit, man. See, that's what I want to see. That's my boy. He getting to it let's get you know what to i gotta it. get to it hey yeah what yeah. we doing today man how we get yeah for sure all right that's what i'm right. looking for and shit because at the end of the day you gotta leave something to these motherfucking babies man that's it yep. if you don't leave none to these babies you ain't did your job and like you that's said we in, the, we in the cold world ways though the selfish shit out here the manipulation you know everybody playing a victim to make you feel bad like no <sighs> no you breathing like I'm breathing, baby. You better go get it yourself, Man. especially if you grown. Straight up. If you grown, motherfuckers entitled. Uh, it's just wild out here. It and is. It's like, and it's like, you 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 know, if if you young and you in the league, like I feel sorry for a lot of them boys, man, because the shit that's coming their way, a lot of dudes can fuck their game up because they got to worry about who, you know, the cousins or the the brothers or the, the aunties or, you know, the uh, all types of motherfuckers that's, Everybody, you know, everybody wants some money. No, nah, everybody. Everybody they, wants some money. And if you ain't got a motherfucking strong foundation, if, for real, for real, if you ain't got a mom to be like, fuck everybody. Yeah, straight up. Uh, you get you, you, you send them some money if you want. Yeah. I'ma fuck you up. Word. Uh, then you you ain't good. You done. Because you got to think about them M's at your account, and you know everybody got an idea. Y'all need ten grand because I'm trying to do this. I need. Everybody think, you know. <laughs> Everybody got an idea. Hey. But then the worst part of, like, and, and it always at home for dudes because it's like, because that's, in a, in a relationship, that's the soft spot. Your lady, mm-hmm. that's like, that's where shit get, you, you little, do a little pillow talking, you loving, doving and all that. But she also paying attention to how much of these other niggas is making too. And she just sometimes it ain't just all easy and she just around here like, oh, okay, yeah, that's nice, this is nice. I went also went up to the old girl house and then I seen how they was living too. And this, you're like, what? All of a sudden, hold on, how we get on this? So you, 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 you going from right. some of you dudes gonna be sleeping with the enemy? Well, Not you, 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 real talk. You be like, bitch, don't you know my man? But, um, bitch, I, I make one point five a year. That, that nigga make one point five a game, bitch. You're, you're living good though, right? So, but they so now, you, but it's a, they looking on, they so, looking so on Instagram. We, so now I went over they to looking my man on Instagram, friend. seeing Instagram why they, why they like, oh, they got this, they got that, they got that. Like, you know what that nigga? You want know he bringing in? You know what type of? You know what's going on? It, it, the whole time, do you sit there like, um, you you know, uh, you was just in a, a, a low ass apartment, right? <sighs> Uh, you you know this motherfucking house is uh ninety four square feet hundred square feet right, bitch. You know we got a west wing and the east wing. Bitch. You know nobody in your family ever right. lived like this in their life. And you Man, telling me? And off. you telling me about what LeBron doing? Carmelo Anthony had in his crib, bitch. Everything paid. You telling me about the the the, the eight hundred thousand dollars he had to lay? He had in his crib. You told me you want to get that, but you got a brand new G wagon and drive. You you got anything. The, you go shopping where you want. You got all the stuff. He like that. But you talking about was, how big, how big, LeBron wife closet is. The, Bitch, I ain't LeBron. For real. I but, ain't LeBron. But what's so crazy is <laughs> that what's so crazy is that that's what everything is about. Something. Everything is Instagram. about competing. Oh, they got this. Instagram. I got, what can I post? I got to get this. Word. This is what's popping now. I got to get this. This is what. So it, for me, it just be like I don't never follow no motherfucker. I'm not worrying about no trends, man. I'm just That's worried just about doing me. That's it. Right. And, and and another thing, too, what he was saying is, you know, try to find out who you are to all the young motherfuckers that's coming in the league because you would get there 
and you you making more money than than what you ever made, and you think that money gonna be there forever. Man. So now, so now, motherfucker that's proven, the motherfucker that's already did it, the motherfucker that's getting paid real money, he pull up, he got eight cars, man. <laughs> You can't compete with this you got nigga, eight man. Eight cars, three cribs. He got whole other. Sh- you ain't even. You not even in the stratosphere. Don't even. Ca- Shit paid for it. He's, he paid and for all that off, his, for. off a sneaker deal. Yeah, yeah, like that's off. Like that's paid for. You over here renting this to go rent that to go rent that. He, this is paid for. Right. You ain't. Pl- there's no competing. You lost. If you trying to compete. <clears throat> right. Yeah. So don't compete. Just know who you is. Get you, you know, I ain't telling you can't, you know, celebrate the fruits of your labor. Go ahead and get your nice car, but you don't need eight of them bitches right now. If if oh. if, 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 if a time come where you can get eight, trust me, you'll know. 100%. You'll be like, man, I just bought these eight cars to put on my taxes, man, because I, I get so much money. But well, shit, man, we're going to wrap it up, man. We appreciate it. Oh, all right. Nigga, he bubbling and shit. We're going to... Oh, get him some toilet paper. He got to take a shit. JR yeah. taking a shit. Yeah. First time somebody took a shit on Million Dollars River Game. Yeah, that's some Don't bear shit. back the toilet. Lace the toilet, nigga. Yeah. It's a light for you, man. Any shitting in the dark. Any turn yeah, light ain't on. Yeah, he ain't turn Shit gonna be all over the toilet at the back. Uh, no, man. Damn. No, I spot the fuck up like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the first time, though. This, um, this history, man. It's the first time anybody ever took a shit doing right yep. doing the interview. Right doing the interview, man. It's and, just wild. And you can see how he was walking. He, he was walking bold like it, uh, it was it was some clinching uh, in the going on in there. You ain't he was to... bubbling, walking on his tippy toe. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't the motherfucker take a shit. <laughs> it was one of the watery pups too. Yeah. Shit come out water. Well, <laughs> Hit the motherfucker Hit the back of the, the yeah, whole boy. back of the toilet blew it. He blow the whole. You go in the joint. Shit gonna be all in the back of the toilet. The backboard. He didn't rip. Fuck you. Left that shit all on the backboard. Motherfucker threw a grenade. <laughs> threw a grenade on the nigga. Poof. <laughs> <laughs> He, he, he want to be golfing, drinking all them fruit juices and all shit. Dumb shit. He, <laughs> he want to be drinking all them healthy fruit juices on the golf course. <laughs> shit yeah, he, run through him like a muff. <laughs> he got the tennis shirt on with the slacks bubbling. You know they be wearing the Dockers and shit. Yeah, he got the wrinkle-free cotton Dockers on bubbling and shit on the golf course. JR oh, Spliff. Yeah. JR Shits. <laughs> <laughs> he took a smash, JR Shits. <laughs> Motherfucker yeah, first, the hour, first, motherfucker, saying, first motherfucker took a shit during the middle of the interview. That yeah, was wild, man. man. He turned to the Michael Jackson <laughs> monkey bubbles. Oh, hold on, let me just <laughs> <the> bubbles. <laughs> first of all, you know he, a nigga got a piss, he gonna hold it. Nigga got a shit, shit. you can't yeah. hold it. Yeah, hold no. Nah, I've been trying to hold that. I'm he was trying to get through. Motherfucker, the motherfucker Chick Fil A fries activated. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Toy yeah. down. That grease wasn't right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they used some old grease. <laughs> That old grease that's fucked him South up. That's South Jersey grease, man. That's the South Jersey grease <laughs> fucked him up. They had the grease for a month. They keep, they keep draining the grease every night. They keep that shit for a month. Just get all the particles out of it. Just keep dropping it back. Oh, pour it back in there. It's cool. You taste anything in there. Last batch. You get some fries that <laughs> taste like fish. <laughs> like, damn, it. it tastes like some flounder. They had some crab cakes in this joint? Yo, for real. Oh, fuck I ain't asking no crab shit. fries. Yeah, <laughs> but man, JR, man, we appreciate, appreciate you for coming you, through, man. You gave up some real Straight game, up. some real motherfucking spill today. We enjoyed it. I'm pretty sure our viewers is going to enjoy this motherfucker interview too. You know what I mean? Shout out to Big Rodney Rogers. But, you, but, but by, by you Don't dealing lie. in the game, one, one moment. By you being in the in the, in the game, city to city. Hey, I'm just saying, like, have you ever had any issues with though? You be messing with somebody. Somebody you might have a chick, and she got a dude, and they stalking you or anything. Was it ever the time? It happened. It happened before. Damn, that's crazy. It happened before. It happened before. It's crazy. He laughing hard. But nah, because it, it 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 put a bad rap on on Jersey, man. Because it's like, it's like I would expect that from somewhere else. What you mean? Somewhere else, like. Put a bad rap on Jersey. Cause I'm from Jersey. Like we, oh. like I was like, if somebody told me that story, right? If you told me that story, this happened from somebody from somewhere else. I'd be like, oh, all right, that makes sense. But when y'all when, when you tell me the story like that, and this happens for somebody to be where I'm from, 
and then that state is just like damn. Like, oh, so you was smashing up. somebody girl that's from Jersey? I see. I ain't say all that. All oh, I right. said exactly. was when it ha- it, I was disappointed in the fact that it just be happened to be somebody from Jersey that was doing. I don't know what he talk about. I'm confused. What happened with what you talk about with from Jersey? Nah, so a long time ago, long, long, long time ago, I was messing with this girl, and just so happened that this girl was messing. She was she was messing with some dudes at the time, but this in particular dude used to be her her man. Oh, okay. He kind of got into like some stalking shit. Stalking, stalking her. Her and kind of me, like, he would, like, do little petty shit, like, send her shit and, like, shit that I was doing or if I was trying to do something or, like, where I was at and following me, shit like that. Damn. Damn. Be in her hallway on some weird shit, like, what you doing, bro? Like, and this wasn't even, like, my girl. Like, this was just, like, it just so happened that people caught wind of it and it just, like, made it seem like, oh, this is this girl, this is... Like, bro, we was just kicking it. Yeah. Just. Damn. We was ejaculating and evacuating. <laughs> <laughs> what team was you playing for? You was just smashing and dashing. That's it. Um, <laughs> you was, was just with, hitting and you quitting. Was, you was with the Knicks? Yeah, I was with New York. Wow. Uh-oh. Okay. Man, he was. He Even was New York City. Hitting another basketball. Welcome that was a long York time City. ago, though, man. Then he said another nigga, nigga basketball player and bitch, and he put Bro. him under investigation. Man. Nah, see, that's what I don't do, man. I got respect for my dudes. <laughs> he don't mess with the players. Oh, so she uh, wasn't in the, he wasn't in the league? Nah, nah, nah. nah. Oh, he was a Giants player. He was tackling the Giants player, bitch. I don't play in the same sandbox. It might have been a no, rapper. No, it was, he was no, a Giants he, he player. Be a, a he was a, a football player or a rapper? No, a rapper would have shot him. Ain't no, no all motherfucking these dudes rappers ain't, putting him under all investigation. These, man, shit, all these fuck dudes ain't. Ain't no rapper doing that investigation. Shit, you fuck you mean? On a bitch, a rapper. Shit. That was bad. It was the Giants, nigga. Man, he tackled one of the Giants boys, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> he, he hired a private investigator. Where is he at? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Hip hop police, man. Damn, Hip hop police. Hip-hop po- oh, wait. He said, "Hip hop police is rap." I was just saying, like police, like oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got no, we ain't got no NBA police. So I was like, "Hip hop police." No, y'all do got NBA police. I mean, Cause, yeah, cause the motherfucker, you see, you drove back a motherfucker would have been like, "Why the fuck you got off that plane at four oh, thirty? Bullshit. Listen, well, you heard what Carmelo said when he was on the show. He's like, "They know everything." Yeah. If nah. you go, if you go in a corner in America and just go in the store and buy a Lucy cigarette. We knew he was down in uh, Baltimore <laughs> yeah. by the Lucy. No, dead ass, though. He said the motherfucking uh, commissioner was like, I know what you're doing down there in Baltimore. Cut it the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> nah, for real. He that shit that. was like, I ain't gonna hold you. If you like, very few people probably got that, that like, what are those calls. Like, when you really was, like, in trouble or something, yeah. especially with the league and shit, and David Stern call you. Yeah. And that shit was, like, really, like, it was like worse than going to the principal or something. When you got that call, you know what, what happened? He called you. Hey, well, he hey. called me. I spliff. got uh, <laughs> spliff. How you doing? He called me when I got suspended. And, um, we played. This was when Denver. When we was with Denver when I was play, uh, played against in New York. We got in a fight. Yeah, he he called, and at first I ain't answer. I don't know nobody calling me block. Like I ain't answering that shit. And then this is back in the day when we still listen to voicemails and shit like that. Mm. Voicemail hit, and it was a secretary. Like, this is David Stern's office. We're going to call you back. Uh, David Stern expecting you to call you back. This and that, and that. So I'm like, man, I ain't calling this motherfucker back. I ain't going to lie. That's the type, type shit I was on. I ain't calling this motherfucker back. And uh, my agent at the time was like, listen, it's very few, I, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but it's very few things that you're going to have to do. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to call this man back. And I was like, shit. I called him back. He got on the phone. JR, you know, you're a very talented player. Da, 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 da. Let off with all the good shit. Like, oh, all right, bet. Like, I'm thinking everything's smooth. It's cool. And then he dove right in, like, you know, you're ready to fuck your whole career up. And da, 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 this league can make you and break you. And, you know, through, through shit like that out there. And I was just like, damn, let me get my shit together real quick. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's where, like, 
And, that's, and, and right out, it was, it was fucked up because right that's when I was like really starting to come into my own. Me and Melo was like the highest scoring duo in the, mm-hmm. in the league and shit. And then we had traded. Right? We got get into the fight. Then we trade for AI. Then I start coming off the bench, and it was just like that's when I got put in that role to like, oh, he's just the dude come off the bench, opposed to like an actual starter. Right. So you know that shit, that shit changed your bread. You starting, you come off the bench. That's you go from making then at a max to then right. there mid level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying so, and I mean it still worked out because obviously I stuck around for so long, but. Should, How like, many years total? Sixteen. Damn, that's what she had. That's baseball years, right? Yeah. So you needed that call though. Commissioner called him Jr. Um, Stop the bullshit. Let's slim nah, it down to ounce a week, Jr. You whole fucking <laughs> really <laughs> stinking. Yeah, pound the game, pound and pound before each game. It's not gonna work. What? He's like Jr. The fucking NBA locker rooms is smell like you got the other locker rooms. I'm not gonna lie, bro. That shit make me mad because I want my bread back. They suspended me and fined me all them games for that weed, bro. Now that you can just smoke how much? How much? How much all together? I lost a couple hundred. Damn. Yeah, but you walking in that bitch raccoon eyes. Yeah. You, know, you been smoking? Me? Hell nah. See, that's the only thing. I ain't start doing that shit. Until, like me? Like. <laughs> they like, yeah, have you been smoking? You talking about me? Smoking? I never used to smoke for the game like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> he still got smoke coming out of his mouth. <laughs> me? Nah, see, I ain't smoking. never used to smoke for the games like that. I couldn't <laughs> no, do didn't. it. Nah. Probably to perform uh, smoke, the best. Because, like, even if, even, like, to me, even if you did, like, you got, like, two hours before the game, before, like, why you, when you there to the game start, you got, like, two hours. So you're not going to be high anyway. But for me, I was always paranoid because people would already assume that I smoked. So they just, that's the first thing they're going to say, oh, this is high, ah, he does, he does. Yeah. Like, so I was like, at, at worst, I can't give him this excuse. You know what I'm saying? Like, you think he was paranoid a little bit because you was high? Do you nah. think I'm high? <laughs> My fuck's looking at See, him. I ain't no paranoid. Shit. I'm not a paranoid like smoker. You think I'm out? The only. I'm not a paranoid smoker. I'd be too lax because I smoke. I get I get those complaints. Shit to be happening. I'd be like, oh, word. And they'd be like, damn, why you not like active? I'm, right. like, I'm chilling. Like. <laughs> they like, yeah, he's. <laughs> Who gave him the cuss? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they was like, fuck what you doing up on 120th and nickels. No bullshit. Oh, hey, yo. We seen you there again, JR. No bullshit. Just up there. You wasn't going to get no jerk chicken. Man. You was getting that smoke, that sour. <laughs> we know what they sell up there. That's funny, though. They Now, now and now I know you mad as shit. This nigga done lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now niggas, now niggas be like this. Yeah, nigga, that was a hell of a game, motherfucker. But my like my my I, and I get it like you gotta you gotta clean the league up to an extent. But like you go from motherfuckers drinking Budweiser and Coors Lights at halftime, smoking cigarettes and joints at halftime, to the strict ass shit to where you can't do nothing, and now you open it back up to where, okay you you good you now, and then you you ridicule. And do all of this shit and, and like like dehumanize people because you trick the the public into thinking they like these fiends or drug addicts right. and shit like that. So right. you lose deals and endorsements, shit like that. And right. it's like, bro, you fuck with people's life, and now all of a sudden now it's just okay. Now it's cool. You open it back the floodgates up. Right. Like, what about the, that twenty year gap where right. this motherfucker was supposed to make a hundred mil, and now all of a sudden he can't make five dollars because you just tarnish his whole legacy. legacy. Cause motherfucker gonna need, cause he let us smoke the weed. Mm. Though if you stay Jr., if you stay away from the weed, man, I don't even get me started on him. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> Jr., you only got one job, Jr. Man, that's it, Jr. Man. To stay off of the weed. He got one. He got. And he got one job. It's an entertainment. <laughs> that's it. Pure entertainment. Yeah. Well, you know me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a I'm an advocate for connoisseur, so uh, for, for 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 marijuana. So, you know, I never think that marijuana causes anything, any harm to anybody. So, I, I think that you know we should all smoke a joint a day at least. What you think, Wallo? You, you like you think we causes harm? Loser. He's a loser. He called my wife and said. I be telling Gil stuff, and he never forgets. He lost. He his never. He never oh, remembers. He lost his memory. I the think, weed. No, that nigga, I remember what I want to remember. You blame you it on the weed? You tell me about a dumb shit. 
You be telling me a lot of dumb shit, so I don't remember what yeah. I want to remember. Why you blaming on the weed though? He getting, he getting like, he getting, all, he getting really messed up. He, he keep forgetting stuff. It's the weed, man. I, re- I read up on it, did the research, memory loss. Google it. Uh, memory think, loss because of weed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I should be getting better. Me too. Fuck wrong with him. <laughs> like, yeah, for man. real. Fuck wrong with him. Nigga never drank a brewski. Never had no weed. Like never drink, popped a perk. You like to drink brewski. Never took a zanny. That's nothing. all the stuff. All the stuff that you did. Never did nothing. Never did no sir. Never did a line. You never did nothing. You never did. Kill you to let them lines. That's cool. You can whatever you. But you never I did. Ain't going with Larry Larry. 